good evening, uh, Mansfield Pentecostal Church. It's wonderful to be with you uh, again this evening. Uh, trust that God is blessing you in these strange times. Uh, I want to read to you from Hebrews chapter 3 uh, and verses 12 uh, to uh, 13. Hebrews 3, 12 and 13. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Um, I think that one of the most important things that we can do in the church, especially at this time and season that we're going through, is to uh, encourage one another. Um, the Holy Spirit, uh, the third member of the of the Godhead, is described as the Comforter. You can read about that in John chapter fourteen, uh, etc. And the Greek word for uh, comfort and 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 encourage are are, are almost identically the same. Uh, and so when we give ourselves to the ministry of encouragement helping to build people up in in their faith we are we are bringing ourselves in line with one of the main ministries of the holy spirit the holy spirit comes alongside us as a comforter and when we encourage we come alongside people who need to have their spirits lifted um etc so give yourself to this ministry because you're bringing yourself in line with what the Holy Spirit does in our lives as well. William Barclay was um, uh, a great scholar. Um, he wrote some great commentaries, and uh, this is what he said. One of the highest of human duties is the duty of encouragement. It is easy to pour cold water on people's enthusiasm. I suppose we've all done that sometimes. It is easy to discourage others. We have a Christian duty to encourage one another. Many a time a word of praise or thanks or appreciation has kept a man on his feet. I know that's certainly been true of me in my um, many years of um, ministry. Okay, three, three questions uh, very, very briefly. Um, why must I be an encourager? Well, because God commands us to. That verse of scripture in Hebrews 3, um, verse 13, but encourage one another. It's not an optional extra in, in our lives. It is, it is an all-embracing uh, command. Um, now, I do know, I do know that that within the church of Jesus, according to Romans chapter 12, and I've experienced this for myself, that there are some people who have the gift of encouragement. Uh, sometimes I just have to look at certain people when I'm preaching and, and I'm encouraged. Some people I, I would try not to look at. But you read it there in, in Romans 12. Some have a special ability to en encourage. But having said that, just because somebody uh, has a, a special gift in that area does not mean that we shouldn't do it as well. Um, we all have to give ourselves to this ministry. The beautiful thing about encouragement is that it's something that all of us can do. Now, God commands me to do it. That's why I must be an encourager. And then uh, God's people need it. God's people really need it. Um, there are a number of reasons why we should encourage God's people. Well, first of all, it can, it can prevent backsliding. That verse that I read to you, um, see to our brothers that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. I know I have a nature within me that wants to turn away from the living God. But then he says, but encourage one another. So that will not happen. Now we've all got to take personal responsibility. But having said that, maybe we have contributed to somebody turning away from God because we have not done the right thing by encouraging them. 
It can prevent somebody from backsliding. It can also build them up. Um, 1 Thessalonians 2, 1 Thessalonians 5 uh, and 11, um, we, we see that uh, uh, encouragement can, can build people uh, up. Um, we can put a new spirit within somebody by our encouragement. Uh, we can be, as, as it were, another Barnabas who encouraged. And, and maybe, maybe the reason why we have got so much of the writings of the Apostle Paul was because there was a man by the name of Barnabas who encouraged him. Uh, he did the same with John Mark um, as, as, as well. So encouragement strengthens zeal. So why must I be an encourager? Well... God commands us to be, and it can build up the people of God. Now, where should, where should I be an encourager? Well, the old saying is true, isn't it? Charity begins at home. And that's also true, I believe, of, of encouragement. Uh, and encouraging church is usually a reflection of a lot of encouragement that is going on in the home. Charity really does begin at home. If I was a guest in your house, an unseen guest, what would I see? What would I hear? Would I hear a lot of sarcasm? Or would I hear put downs? Or would I hear good job? Well done. I appreciate what you do. A husband should appreciate his wife. A wife should appreciate her husband. I like what it says about that lady that we read about in, in Proverbs 31. Um, her children praise her and her husband speaks well of her. Oh, well, that's great, isn't it? I've got something here I came across many years ago, but I, th I think it's true. If a child lives with criticism... He learns to condemn. If a child lives with hostility, he learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, he learns to be shy. If a child lives with shame, he learns to feel guilty. If a child lives with tolerance, he learns confidence. If a child lives with praise, he learns to appreciate. If a child lives with fairness, he learns justice. If a child lives with security, he learns to have faith. If a child lives with approval, he learns to like himself. If a child lives with exception and friendship, he learns to find love in the world. So husbands should encourage their wives and vice versa, and we should encourage our, our children um, from home. Encouragement should flow into the church and and Hebrews chapter 10 and 25 says, don't, for, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Now, that seems like a silly kind of verse to quote at this time, doesn't it? Because we, we can't get together the way that we used to, can we? Um, but when things do come back to a, a kind of normality, you know, there's more, there's more to come into church than just listening to a sermon. We're there to encourage one another. And if we can get into small groups, uh, whatever size they might be, let's make certain that encouragement is high on the uh, agenda. Uh, there, there are so many people who need uh, an infusion of encouragement because encouragement basically means putting courage in people. So where can you do it? Well, start in your home. May it flow into the church and into society. When you're in the when you're in the shop, and um, staff treat you treat you nicely, encourage them. Thank you. Say say thank you for your kindness. You you might take them by surprise if you do that, but just just do that. So why? God says we should. People need it. Where should we encourage? Well, let's start 
Let's start at home and may it flow into the church. Now, how, how can I be an encourager? Well, Hebrews chapter 10, 24 said, let's consider how we can spur one another on to love and to good works. That verse says we should prayerfully consider how we can encourage one another. Well, we can, obviously, we can, we can do it by our words, can't we? Oh, my. Words can either heal or hurt. They can either blister or bless. Words are either a, a, a tonic or, or they're a toxic. Words are so powerful, aren't they? Words that we use can encourage people. Why do we have to wait? I've often wondered this. Why wonder why do we have to wait sometimes before people are no longer with us that we just say something nice to them? I wonder why we have to do that. I'm not saying that we always do that. But I suppose kind words would be more appreciated while we're still here rather than before Jesus takes us. It was Mark Twain, the American writer, who said, I, I can live two months on a good compliment. I, I like that. I can live two months on a good compliment. Hey, you read about it in the Bible. People encourage one another by, by the word, by our example. Our example can be an encouragement. Um, Philippines chapter 1, verses 12 and 14, Paul, Paul by his attitude, became uh, an example, and as a result of that, an, an encouragement um, to his, his brothers and sisters in, in Christ. We, we can encourage people by our letters, by our, by our phone calls, by our texts. Uh, you might want to read Hebrew, or, or rather Acts chapter 19 and verse uh, 31. Um, some missionary or church member could be blessed by an encouraging letter. Your church leaders could be blessed by a, a, a letter. Friends, people, people desperately need it. <clears throat> We've been hearing a lot recently about um, Black Lives Matter and um, etc. Things like that. Um, William Wilberforce was a, uh, a great man of God who pushed for the abolition of slavery in this country for a long, long time. He was discouraged at times in his pursuit of abolishing slavery in this country. One day he received a letter from John Wesley, a man who I've got profound uh, gratitude for and admiration for. It came to Wilberforce from London in February 26, 1791. Let me just read to you this letter, a, a, an encouraging letter from Wesley to Wilberforce. Dear sir, dear sir, unless the divine power has raised you up, I see not how you can go through your glorious enterprise in opposing the abominable villainy which is the scandal of religion of England and of human nature. He's talking about slavery. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are all of them stronger than God? Oh, be not weary in well-doing. Go on in the name of God and in the power of his might till even American slavery, the vilest that ever saw the sun, shall vanish away before it. I pray that he who has guided you from your youth up may continue to strengthen you in this and in all things is the prayer of your affectionate servant, John Wesley. A few days after Wesley penned that letter, he died at the age of 88. 
It took two decades before Wilberforce saw the abolishment of slavery in England. In 1807, slavery was abolished in England and, and he died in 1833. And in 1833, it was abolished in the British Empire. Whenever Wilberforce got discouraged, he went to that letter, that letter of Wesley's, and it encouraged him. Perhaps there's a Wilberforce out there that is waiting to get a letter from you that will cause him to do great and mighty things. Call people, text them. I know we're living in strange times now, but oh, may it not extinguish the ministry of encouragement, which is so desperately needed. The great devotional writer F.B. Mayer, at the end of his life, um, he said, if I had to live my life over again, he said, I'd give myself more to the ministry of comfort and encouragement. Hey, I'm a septuagenarian now. I'm in my 70s. Maybe, maybe that's something I need to give myself more to as, as well. Well, why being an encourager? I've given you the reasons where and, 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 and how. Now, just ponder on what I've been talking about. Um, maybe maybe a, a, a good verse of Scripture uh, to look at would be um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 11 and 12 and first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11 just look at those verses scriptures in their context and a, a question to ponder given the strange times that we're living in <coughs> excuse me oh, hope you don't catch anything through that <laughs> uh it's just a cough honestly um given the strange times that we're li living in um, let's try to come up with some creative ideas how we can encourage people. Maybe, maybe a food parcel for somebody. Maybe a, a bunch of flowers. Maybe, maybe standing outside their house singing. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. But you, I'm, I'm sure you take the spirit of what I'm talking about. Let's just pray. Lord, there's so much that people can get discouraged about. And I suppose we can even discourage people by our actions and by our thoughtfulness. But help us to be a people who will encourage your people. May it begin in our homes and may it spill into our churches. And may it even spill into society. Help us to be like Barnabas of old, the, the son of encouragement. Lord, hide your word deep within our hearts and bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. The Lord bless you.